and it's the intention of the government to progress with another bill. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, I move that the Social Security Commencement of Benefits Amendment Bill be now read a first time. Mr Speaker, the government has a long established policy position on benefit stand downs as a way to encourage people to make provision for a short period without income before relying on state assistance. The policy intent has always been that stand down periods are full calendar weeks without state income. To be very clear, this means that a one week stand down is seven days and a benefit would commence on day eight. Operational practice has always reflected the policy intent. Work and income commences benefits on the day after the stand down period ends. However, Mr Speaker, there is a technical error in the Social Security Act that allows a benefit to commence on the day that a stand down period ends instead of the day after. The error occurred as a result of an incorrect amendment on the 3rd of June 1998 but unfortunately was not discovered until May 2014. This bill corrects that error, so a benefit will commence on the day after a stand-down period ends. This change has retrospective effect to 3rd of June 1998. The error needs to be corrected quickly to firstly uphold the government's policy intent, Secondly, to ensure that previous, previous ministry practice is validated. And thirdly, to avoid any unintended financial costs to the Crown. The bill does, however, protect people from the effect of the retrospective validation. If they have had a benefit commence on the day that a stand-down period ended before the amendment is enacted, whether through a new grant or a review or appeal process commenced before the bill comes into force. The bill also provides an opportunity for people to seek a review of decision about their commencement date if their benefit was commenced incorrectly since the error was detected on the 20th of May 2014 onwards. They can do this before or in the case of a benefit that commenced on or after 20 May 2014, after the bill comes into force, up until what I'm proposing the 8th of January 2016, if the SOP I've tabled in this House is accepted by the House. Mr Speaker, this is a fair and balanced approach which allows beneficiaries to claim what they were entitled to under the law while mitigating the financial risk to the taxpayer. Initial data suggests that since June 1998, when the error occurred, 2.7 million benefits have commenced after a stand down. We also know that if this is not corrected, the ongoing additional cost is likely to be around $6 million a year for a technical error in law, not a change in policy. The fiscal risk to the taxpayer cannot remain unchecked which is why we have separated out this change from the Social Security Extension of Young Persons Services and Remedial Matters Amendment Bill. Mr Speaker, I believe this bill takes a fair and balanced approach to correcting an error in the legislation. Beneficiaries will have until January the 8th to lodge an appeal for any benefits granted from when MSD became aware of the issue in May 2014. I also want to take this time to acknowledge Labor's Carmel Sepaloni, who came to me when the issue was raised at Select Committee with a constructive proposal for such a review process. We always want to be able to work across party lines on issues such as this. This error went undetected for 17 years across a number of governments, so it is fitting that we're able to work together on a balanced and fair solution. Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. Mr Speaker.